Uh, welcome back. Good to have you with us this evening, wherever you're watching tonight across the world. We've got roughly between eight to 10,000 of you in some pretty random locations. In fact, actually, the last time I had a look on our wall, the most random location was Mexico. If it's you in Mexico, I think we've just got one viewer in Mexico, so this is a very personal hello to you. Uh, on the stage now, we have got Martin Finnegan, Martin High, and we've got James Toesland as well. James, thank you for staying with us this evening. We're looking forward to the music in a, in a wee while. If you want to um, interact with us, you can do it via Twitter, you can do it on Facebook, you can do it online this evening. Send the boys a question and I'll pop it in their direction. Sorry lads, we've got one microphone, we're on a budget tonight, so <laughs> we're going to have to share this one, I've got no germs. Um, very quickly, James, when we get to some of these questions, you just told me when we were off air that you, you landed in a random field in the middle of Norfolk this evening because you were flown down from the northeast. What on earth were you thinking when the plane came down and you thought, wait a minute, there's no bloody runway? Luckily, I'm, I'm used to it because uh, the guy that commentates on the MotoGP is called Steve Parrish, and you might, if there's bike fans in, you'll, you'll, you'll remember Steve Parrish. Uh, and, uh, but unfortunately, Steve uh, has taken his motorcycle brain into his flying a bit, and uh, um, it, it, it certainly opens your eyes. And when, when you land on the fields, because he's got a, a field on his back, where well, he lives in this, in this bungalow uh, in the middle of nowhere in Cambridge, uh, he's got a place on the Isle of Man, and that's how we kind of flown together. Um, and he's got, he's got this farm, which is connected to, to his place kind of thing. And the farmer lets him have his field to land in. Uh, but it is a field. Like, and honestly, when you land in it, it feels like you've landed on a motocross track. <laughs> you know? So in an aeroplane, it's quite daunting. OK, well, you're a brave boy. Uh, what a way to come into North. I'll tell you what the sad thing is, though. It's much more beautiful in the middle of the day when you come and fly across this part of the world. Martin, good to see you as well. Um, you've popped over from Manchester, is that right? Yeah, we were in a, a builder's van that got us here. It took us about five hours, so <laughs> you can tell the difference. No, I'm only joking, no. Um, yeah, it took us about five hours, but beautiful scenery. It's great to be here in Norwich, of course. I have to say, I think actually the builder's van sounds a damn sight more comfortable than that plane ride coming down from Scarborough. Right, here's a couple of um, the, the texts and tweets that have come into the programme tonight, just to throw in your direction, boys. Um, first one, we don't have a name on this. Uh, just one of the, um, one of the tweets saying... James, can you just tell us a wee bit more about when you first met Marco Simoncelli? Oh, um, I first met Marco um, while I was racing. Um, I first joined MotoGP and, uh, and he won the uh, 250 championship as it was. Um, and then he came up to MotoGP um, and really he joined the year after I left. And uh, um, um, But I'd done quite a few promotional things and the band had played uh, at MotoGP events and, uh, and got to meet him through that. And... Um, is uh, a smashing lad, um, you know, Italian guy. He, he had the charisma and, and the hair and the, and the personality that was going to kind of... Um, you could never replace Valentino Rossi, but um, with Valentino Rossi getting close to, to, to his retirement age, um, it, it was Italy's saviour and, and the next generation along that could kind of that take his... Not take his place, but kind of had that charisma to keep the interest there in MotoGP. And, um, you know, he had, he had charisma... To the, to the full, and he was just a lovely lad. The great thing about him was he was a character, and the sport needs characters, and of course he's just the most tragic loss, and even those who aren't particularly into it as a sport were shocked, saddened, disappointed, upset uh, when he sadly passed on. Yeah, it, it was, you know, I mean, at 23 years old, it, it's, it's, it's just no age to, to go. Um, you know, in the sport that we did, we always, uh, you always know that, you know, it's a dangerous sport, but you never think it's going to be you. Um, and, uh, you know, for, for Colin Edwards, as was a teammate of mine, uh, to collide with him, it's just as horrible, if not harder, for, for, for the person that's actually collided with the person. Um, so I sent Colin a text message straight after it and uh, um, just told him I was thinking about him. And, uh, um, you know, because it's one thing with Simoncelli going, but with uh, the people that are still here, I've having to cope with it is, is, is even tougher, I think. And, uh, you know, for Marco's family and, uh, um, you yeah, know, as I said, it, it just got to that point where he did look like for sure he was going to be a star of the future and a future world champion. What is, it's incredibly sad, but one of the great things about it is the way that the sport pulls together and remembers him and celebrates his achievements in his life, but also um, the way that it unifies the sport and says, you know, this is a tragic event, but we all stand as one. 
and that's the motorcycle community. Uh, as I said before, if you get into motorcycling, uh, you're instantly in uh, the worldwide community of bikers. And it doesn't matter if you speak the language or not. Um, if you go anywhere to a bike festival, and I've done, a, I've done them all from, from, from Australia to Japan, and um, um, it doesn't matter where you're from or what your culture is. If you ride a motorcycle uh, and you put the leather jacket on, um, you think the same way. You're into your music, you're into your rock music, and it just seems like uh, everybody's all in the, in the same bag, and it's, it's, it's a great family to be a part of. Um, I know I speak uh, for all those who are watching tonight and everyone out here in the audience as well, that he is respected, uh, much missed um, as well. Uh, right, this is Nicola Zahn, who's watching in Germany this evening, and she says, say hi to Don. Does that mean anything to any of you two? Don. Don. This is like a blinking seance, isn't it? <laughs> we, got a, we got a Don in the room. Does anybody know Nicola Zahn? Has, we got a, who knows Nicola Zahn? One person. Right, okay. Well, maybe she can tweet and we can follow that one up. Um, well, I've misread the name, have I? Well, what is it? What is the name? Ni uh, we'll come back to that in a second. I oh, it's for Martin, is it? Forgive me, they're having a conversation. They haven't got a clue what they're doing tonight. Right, I think they've all been drinking. Do you know Don? I certainly know Nicola Zahn. Um, there's a big community out there that's on Facebook called the Friends and Fans of Super Sick 58. And um, these people have kept the spirit of Marco um, very much alive with uh, setting up their own community. Um, very much good friends. They meet at MotoGPs and they contacted the band when we first started talking about putting Rise again out for the Marco Simoncelli Foundation. There's a lot of people, as James has just said, who Marco's life touched eminently, and I've found that out ever since we've really done the song. And as James said, I can only echo the biking community. It's one of the kind of most amazing communities, really, because you stand together, whereas other communities kind of fragment. You can still see that in something like this, it's pretty amazing what a community like these people can achieve. So if anyone deserves a round of applause, it's you guys. Thank you. Cheers, Martin. Um, James Clark, does that mean anything to you as a name? Graham Clark, forgive me. Does that mean anything to you as a name? Graham Clark, right, okay. Graham Clark got in contact with the programme tonight. He's watching at home. He says that he first met you in a shop somewhere. You'd lost your wallet. He lent you a tenner. You still own him the money, apparently. <laughs> me? Well, no wonder I forgot about that one. I was born in Yorkshire, you forget about them ones. <laughs> Half an hour afterwards. Yeah, I'll sort it out, pal, don't you worry. Well, he's still watching, um, so you could appear like a right type bastard now, couldn't you? Um, he's, he's still watching. Where's, this, where's the camera? Wait, give him that camera there. Just look down the barrel of that camera and you can talk to him directly. Are you going to give him his money back? Yeah, I'm, I'm at Brands Hatch on Saturday and Sunday for the <laughs> MotoGP. So if you come down there, I'll be there. I'll see you there. I'll, I'll, I'll give it you then. Five pounds interest as well. <laughs> uh, okay, this is... Um, yeah, of you, you can tell he's a true Yorkshireman because he's actually at Silverstone, oh. not Brantack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, this is um, Dan Garvoski um, on Twitter uh, who is having an interesting exchange tonight with us and says that... Uh, he loves the program. Um, he's looking forward to the music. James, great to see you. He says that he would sell his nan to see more shows like this on the television. Um, <laughs> you know, some people are really cruel, aren't they? It's not the same guy you owe a tenor. It's not the same guy you owe a tenor to, luckily. <laughs> um, so apparently we've asked him up in the gallery tonight what category he would put his nan on eBay for, because you know, it's all categorised, isn't it? And he reckons he'd put her down as a vintage cake maker. 